In our story of Yitzchak, we become rather distracted by the fact that he had twins. Um, but if we were to put his parental obligations to the side momentarily, we're left with this looming question of what did Yitzchak do during the day? What was his primary occupation? What did he do when he woke up in the morning from 9 to 5? Where did he go to work? And in this week's parasha, parasha told us, we're told what he did. Yitzchak dug wells. Lots and lots of wells. Actually, the wells that Yitzchak dug weren't his own well, weren't his own discovery. Actually, he went around re-digging wells that Avraham, his father, had dug before him and that had been stopped up by the Palestinian, by the Philistines. So Yitzchak goes around and he opens up those wells again and he gives them names. But hang on, no, they're not names that Yitzchak devises. They're names that Avraham had already given them. So in effect, what Yitzchak does is he goes around, he finds a place where Avraham had dug a well, he wipes off the sign post, the name, the name sign, opens the well up again, Bob, your uncle, job done, clock off. So it seems rather one-dimensional. Digging holes all day. It makes me think of that movie with Shia LaBeouf before he was famous. What do these wells represent? Because it can't be that there's no deeper meaning here. So those wells represent Avraham's search for and discovery of meaning. Mayim Chayim, living water. The water that represents that life force that Avraham discovered. God, creator of everything, life force of everything. The naming of those wells, Avraham's identification of what Hashem was. Recognition of spirituality. So it seems when you have a, a, a person whose primary occupation is discovering the meaning of life, to have a legacy, namely Yitzchak, who just goes around doing the same thing and redigging those wells, it seems a little bit anti but let's put ourselves in Yitzchak's shoes. It must be pretty intimidating to be the son of such a such a mover and shaker, to be the legacy of such a mover and shaker. It must be really challenging. Let's try and make that challenge universal. Maybe that's something that we all experience in our own faith journey. What's new here? I just a parallel of my parents' lives. And actually, we see that throughout Yitzchak's life. It seems to really parallel that of Avraham. He follows in Avraham's footsteps, not just in his um, choice of occupation, but actually throughout his life. Let's take an example. He goes down to the land of the Palishtim, to the king of Imelech. He takes his beautiful wife, Rivka, Hang on, he's worried about Rivka, his beautiful wife, so he lies about his relationship with his wife. And, oh, hold on, is this ringing bells? Oh, yeah, Abraham did exactly the same thing with his own wife, Sarah. To take one example of how Yitzchak's life really is a copy-paste of his father, Abraham. Maybe that's how we feel sometimes, rehashing the same Torah that our parents and their parents and their parents rehashed, having the same halachic arguments that generations before rabbis were having as well, people sitting at their seder tables were having as well. Does it sometimes seem a little bit um, like where's the novelty, where's the excitement? And if I'm just having all of those same conversations and all of those same um, Torah immersions, then well. What am I adding to the mix? Does it seem like I, as a legacy, am also less than? Is it getting a little bit boring? What can I add? What do I add? So if we need to ask the question, if Avraham's search for meaning and his discovery of the answer of life so transformative, so 
was so incredibly groundbreaking. It was the catapult of, of a new relationship between humankind and God, mankind and creation. But without, without Yitzchak to continue that legacy, without Yitzchak to you know, bear the torch of everything that Avraham was able to teach the world, Avraham and Sarah were able to teach the world. Well, you know, then all the novel thinking, all of the creativity, all of the all of the discovery in the world w- would have all been for nothing if you haven't got somebody to somehow carry that message. And that that was Yitzchak. That that was Yitzchak. His entire essence was to continue Abraham's journey, to walk in his father's footsteps. And and that, in a sense, is creation in and of itself, creating a legacy. By continuing a legacy, he's giving life to his father's experiences, his father's um, teachings, his father's Torah. He's giving him enduring relevance beyond the grave and allowing that, um, that story that Abraham started to craft, he allowed that to evolve into a narrative, not just of, of a nation, of our nation, but, but but of all humankind, of, of, of all religion, of all spiritual experiences, Yitzchak is what allowed that to evolve and to live on. King Solomon, Shlomo HaMelech, said, really despondently in Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. And our, our own despondence, that traveling the same route that previous generations traveled, might seem uninspiring, again rehashing the same the same Torah, re-experiencing all, all of the same experiences and practices, religious practices, spiritual practices, making the same halachic arguments, rereading the same duff on a seven-year cycle. But let's take it back again to Yitzchak. Yitzchak was digging up Abraham's well that had been blocked off by the Palishtim. What was he actually doing? Yitzchak was re-engaging on a personal level with everything that Abraham had questioned, with everything that Abraham had discovered. Yitzchak had to go and ask it again for himself and discover again for himself. So there was a novelty there. Those wells hadn't been open for use. The Pelishtim had blocked them up so that it wasn't there for common consumption. Yitzchak had to uncover all of those again. And there was a newness every single time that he did. Every Jew, every Jewish person, even those raised in the most rigorous of Torah homes, has to constantly re-engage with his or her own spirituality, with her own religious experience, with her own faith, with her own Torah learning. We all have to ask questions continuously, challenge, reopen conversations for ourselves for the first time, and not simply accept everything blindly. Because if we do, then yes, it will become uninspiring and samey. And that's maybe what makes the duff so fascinating millennia after the Talmud was compiled. The questions never stop. They never cease to be relevant. And most importantly, they never cease to be new for the person asking the question. So I know for, for my own religious journey, for my own religious experience, and probably for most people, the answer, because that's just how it is, should never hold water, is never, ever a satisfactory answer. And it shouldn't be, because we each need to create answers anew for ourselves and discover truth anew for ourselves. We need to dig wells for ourselves, discover truth. And we do this by asking questions and challenging every single day, and we do that. We ask questions all the time, we challenge all the time, because that's what it means to be Jewish. So continue asking questions. Make sure you ask a good question every single day.
שבת שלום.